This is your RAF reporter. Halton Camp. Once in a while, the workshops of this famous training centre are quiet and deserted. For once in a while, Halton takes time off to celebrate its great record of service. A parade of cadets and their mascot is held upon the square. For 25 years, Halton has been turning apprentices into craftsmen. Craftsmen who, in their turn, help to build up the Air Force of today. After the parade, sports events. Halton can be justly proud of its record. These cadets will form the nucleus of our Air Force of the future. Theirs will be a great responsibility, the maintenance of a just and lasting peace. Calcutta. In the centre of this great city is the Maidan, Calcutta's Hyde Park. And in the Maidan are the statues of the great. And today the great look down upon an airfield. This emergency strip was established in the early days of the Far East War, the days when the Japs stood upon the frontier of India. Then, Calcutta was the target of enemy bombers, both by day and by night. This airfield was a make-do airfield, but it was a vital factor in the defence of Calcutta, and by such improvisations the tide of battle was turned. The Western Front, winter of 44. Mud and more mud. Every job of work, freezing fingers, feet like blocks of ice. And in those days, no job was more exacting than airfield construction, turning soggy quagmires into firm flying grounds. Six months and one victory later. This is an airman's rest centre in Germany, built especially for the boys of airfield construction. Here, every kind of recreation is available. Water still, but with a difference. These chaps played a big part in our victory. Their rest and comfort has been well deserved, for they won their victory the hard way. The long rollers of the eastern oceans break on the shores of many islands. Islands that for centuries have been far from the world's alarms. But in the closing stages of the war, even their peace was shattered. They too became part of the pattern of victory. They became air bases. For whoever would rule the seas must be master of the air above them. Attention all personnel. Attention all personnel. A squadron to the left. B to the right. Get clear of the beaches. A squadron to the left. B to the right. I can't remember exactly when it was we landed on our island. And it's no good asking me where it was because, well, I haven't a clue. Still, what was more important, the Japs didn't have a clue either. It was just a small place with lots of sand and loads of palms. Must be hundreds like it. Attention all personnel. All MT personnel report to seaside immediately. Shifting an airfield was always a big job, in the desert, Normandy, or anywhere else for that matter. But here it was even bigger. First, you've got to get all the equipment in by sea. <laughs> and you need some equipment. Because you've got to hack the field right out of the jungle. But before you can start, you've got to build a road to the place where you're going to do the hacking. The first thing we did after landing was to make a cuppa. For whatever the job, 
Well, you've just got to do it systematically. After that, we made ourselves a home. And we made it good and comfortable, too, because we knew we'd be there for some time. But within a few hours of landing, the main job started. Yes, after a few days, the site took shape. What was once a bit like a hothouse at Kew became a clear space big enough to build a runway. Nowadays, laying a strip is like building something out of Meccano. Section by section, you wheel it out and lay it down. So now we've got our field. Now we had to put some planes on it. We couldn't fly them in was too far. So they had to come in the same way as the airfield, bit by bit. I don't think we didn't get a break once in a while. Sundays, we took things a bit easier. But leisure or no leisure, there was one day when everyone was on the airfield. The day we put the first kites into the air. All the rest of the island rolled up too. Most of them had never seen a plane, much less a fighting job like a Spitfire. Yes, it was... It's a great day. One of those days when you feel, you know, that you achieved something. Some of theirs. No, mate, some of ours. The fates of nations are decided not in battle, but in buildings. The secrets of war are kept by men in offices, men devising new tactics, designing new weapons. From the desk, the conference table, the drawing board, come the plans which mean the difference between victory and defeat. Plans for bombs, jet fighters. Oh, I'm awfully sorry. We must be in the wrong office. But wait a minute. 
It's Joe. Yes, and Joe's creator, Flight Lieutenant David Langdon. Langdon's work has always been in the public eye. Cartoons in Punch and other magazines. And this cheerful little binder haunting every bus and train, telling us to be careful, to wait until it stops. But look here, Flight Lieutenant Langdon, won't you tell us yourself about your career in the Air Force? You won't talk, eh? Well, look, I'll talk and you draw. How about that? Right, here goes. David Langdon went into the service the usual way, the good old hard way. The first thing he did was volunteer for air crew. Two MOs looked into his ears. They couldn't see each other, so they said he'd had it. So Langdon was given the status of an irk. His first uniform was a perfect fit. Everybody in the stores said so. Then people came and talked to him. Talked to him very personally about discipline and self-respect. Then they gave him a trip to the seaside. And there, after a course of what they termed a square bashing, they changed him into a new man. Soon after came an interview for a commission. And as it always is with interviews, he was kept waiting. Not to put too fine a point upon it, he was kept sweating on the top line. Eventually, a senior officer arrived. It was decided that Langdon was a good type, and therefore fit to be issued, uh, on repayment of course, with just half of one of these rings. After his commission, there came a real assortment of jobs, coping with 295s, 658s, 664Bs, AMOs, DROs and CROs, all the mysteries of admin. Then, making our gen cards, reading reports, weaving spells and casting horoscopes in the department called intelligence. But all this time, Langdon was drawing pictures for odd RAF posters, pamphlets and manuals. Until one day, at Air Ministry, somebody high up said, What's this? This stuff is just the stuff we want to uh, put the stuff over. And so Langdon was posted to a new job, assistant editor to the Royal Air Force Journal. And it was then that his irks, flight sergeants and other types really began a job of work. And every month you can see them in the pages of the journal, your magazine. And if you don't see the journal, then some bad type has put your copy in his pocket. One day Langdon's number will come up, and so will Joe's and their work in the service will be done. But the RAF will always remember Joe with deep affection. Joe wandering through that bewildering maze of officers, warrant officers and NCOs. And we can rest assured that Joe, whatever his new job, will always remain a man of the people.